Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. This video is dedicated to all the complete, um, complete newbies. People who are interested in the craft but are not sure where to start on their spiritual journey, how to um, develop themselves into a witch, what studies to practice, yada yada. So this is just a complete video for you guys who have no experience in the craft but you're interested in it and you just want some direction, some advice, and some input on how to start your path, your journey. Um, so yeah, I just finally have a moment and I decided to go outside. So, when you're first starting the craft, I think the most important thing to discuss is about the use of tools. I think, you know, just common sense wise, us switches, we use tools like candles, incense, herbs, crystals, you know, wands, magical knives like athames, bells, um, singing bowls, a lot of stuff. Witches, we utilize what's around us in the natural world to bring manifestations into our life, to heal ourselves, to um, get spiritual guidance, and so forth. <clears throat> Well, when you're first starting the path, it can become all overwhelming to not only understand, um, you know, why we do and use certain things, but it's also important to keep in mind that when you're first beginning the craft, a good place to start um, in general is just to get your basic tools. Tools are great to, you know, to get us focused for what our intent is, for doing spells, magical workings and stuff, but I would say when you're first starting out, tea lights, white tea lights that you can buy from the dollar store or pretty much anywhere really, um, I get mine from the Dollar Tree, no shame in that, they're cheap and you get like a 16 pack for a dollar, which I like, white, um, the reason I say white tea lights is because when you're first starting out, um, you may want to, I know you, it may seem tempting to buy all the colors of the rainbow for your candles, but when you're first starting out, you may not understand the color correspondences of those colors. Like, you know that you like the red candle, but you may not be sure um, what a red candle is good for. So white is good to start off with because you use white candles for any intent. You can use it for cleansings, banishings, um, doing literally any type of magical working or ritual. White candles are good for all magical t intents and purposes. So that's why I say white tea lights are good to start off with. Um, incense is good as well, just so you can cleanse yourself, your space, and your ritual tools. Um, incense sticks are good, incense, incense cones that you could buy, um, some people, they even use aromatherapy, like using essential oils or uh, the wax melts for candles. Um, all are good. I personally have a smudge wand of white sage. The smoke is very heavy. If you're not able to burn incense smoke for your living situation, rather, if you're in an apartment or you're living with your parents, you're a closet witch, you can also make consecrated water, which is you basically just take in water tap water, sea salt, um, I mean seawater, or rain, you can use that to um, put that in a spray bottle with some herbs and use that to cleanse if you can't um, use incense for the smoke. Another thing I want to heavily emphasize on when you're starting out is just a notebook paper and a pen or pencil. Just because not only do you want to write down information that you're learning about, with witchcraft but you also it's very important to journal your experiences whether that be deja vu um visions or just spells that you've done that you've tried because over time it's important to see not only how you progress but you can also see maybe um the spell didn't manifest the best way you wanted it to and you can look back at your notes and see what you've done wrong or what you could have done better Now, another thing I want to mention when you're starting out in the craft is, okay, so regardless if you buy all the crystals or herbs you want, it's important to understand why they're used, what they're important, and there's a lot of crystals and herbs out there. You can become very overwhelmed just by remembering them, because 
um, not only you have to un understand what their properties are for crystals and herbs, but you got to be able to look at it and tell, hey, that's lavender, this is opalite, this is hematite, you know, stuff like that. So just take your progress slow when you're learning your crystals and herbs, just because if you can there's a lot out there and it, it can become overwhelming. So just start off with learning five at a time or, you know, just work at your own pace. Um, so let's say you're wondering where, uh, what topics are good to learn when I'm first on the craft? What are things I should know if I'm a beginner witch so I can start my own practice? Well, I think it's important to know the different types of witches out there, not just so you can understand um, what other practitioners are out there, but maybe you can, um, you know, you can learn about the different practices are out there, and maybe um, one catches your eye where you may want to uh, try practices of that, like hedge, hedge witchcraft, sea witchcraft, elemental magic, um, there's literally tons and tons of different practices out there, so it's not only important to understand um, what other people are practicing, but maybe you want to um, get involved in one of those practices too. What You may find one that you are um, connected with or one that you're interested in that you may want to practice as well. So other than learning about the different types of witches, the witches and different types of witchcraft, I think it's also important to understand the different um, color associations, what different colors mean, because not only colors are not only just important for uh, using different colored candles, but you can understand the color correspondences, meaning like maybe wearing red robe is good for you know love magic and sex magic, and purple will be good for um, contacting your ancestors. Blue will be good for healing or for initi um, white will be good for initiations or rites of passages, rituals. You know, that's another way uh, colors are important. Or just using uh, different colored bags or ribbons just to incorporate for your spell candles or for your spell bags, um, sachets, that type of thing. So, types of witches, what different colors mean, color correspondences, I would also say learning the different phases of the moon is important just so you can look up at the moon and understand this phase is good for this type of magical working um, and so forth. And also learning the different um, magical days of the year like the eight Sabbaths. Maybe you want to honor the changing of the se seasons like Wiccans do. You don't have to be Wiccan to celebrate those days but they're the major practice that... Um, that incorporates them. Um, like, for for instance, um, Halloween is the common name for Samhain. That's a, a great day of ritual for not only honoring your ancestors, but contact contacting spirits from the veil, the other side. So, sabbats, colors, different types of witches, um, practices. I would also say, also said lunar magic. Um, the sabbats, and also learning what the different types of tools um, are, are good for. Like, what's a, what's a wand really good for? What's a ritual knife athame good for? What's, um, how can I use a feather for my craft? Um, maybe you want to invoke um, a spirit animal that way by having a turkey feather. You want to invoke a, a tur the turkey as your um, totem, patem, totem power animal. Um, another thing to consider when you're first starting off the craft is there is plenty, plenty of books out there to just get you started to understand the, um, many s different topics. Um, I recommend if you're trying to buy cheap books, um, on witchcraft to go on thriftbooks.com. It's a website and an app, Thrift Books. I use it myself to buy, um, used or just cheap books in general. Um, that would otherwise be full price or really expensive elsewhere, like Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Um, they're a really good source for that. They have all kinds of, um, of well-known writers, like Scott Cunningham, um, Silver Raven Wolf, and plenty of other authors. So feel free to check them out. They're really good. Um, and I will um, also put in the description box 
for um, recommendations of books. If you are trying to stock up on your magical library, I'll give you uh, recommendations of books that I personally use in my craft and ones that are on my wish list that I am going to use in my practice. Now, if, on top of all those things I've mentioned, I also want to talk about the importance of um, when you're starting off a witch, it is very important to not only just, you know, know things, but it's also important to have a daily practice. Now, it's going to take time for you to, um, you know, find a, not only a practice that you're connected to and that you enjoy and, you know, defining yourself in a path, but it's important to get a daily ritual, um, spiritual practice because, you know, like some people, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just say what I do. What I do is I wake up in the morning I cleanse myself using sage or some holy water that I've made previously or anoint myself with some oil. I'll go to my altar, um, which is my ritual working space, and I'll just say some daily affirmation of the day, morning devotions. I'll do some energy work. I'll write in my grimoire, um, which is just magical journaling. I'll also give myself a, a tarot spread for the day or for the week or whatever my intention is. Um, maybe an oracle spread as well, depending on my needs for that day. Um, you know, just finding it, it's, it's, a, it's just, it's a good, um, it's just something you want to keep in mind that as you learn who you are as a witch over time and what your practice is, it's important to have a daily practice just so you can get yourself constantly in that, um, you know, in that frame of mind for your magic. And just to also just, you know, witchcraft, it, it's not... Um, you know, just for Halloween or certain days of the year, witchcraft is a way of life, is what I'm trying to say. So, another thing, um, since mentioning that, is that when you're a beginner, it is important to set up your own altar. All An altar, basically, is just you having a space, um, it could be in your room or a travel altar, and it will just, it's a space where you can not only do your magical spells and rituals and stuff, but just for you to... Um, you know, have a have a magical space that resonates with you, that speaks to you deep on your soul, where you can look at it and say, hey, I feel witchy, I feel peace and tranquil here, this is my spiritual place. It's a very, very important to set up one. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy or be filled with a bunch of, you know, herbs and bottles and candles and stuff. It could be anything you want it to be, but it is very important to have your own altar space, not just for you to do your magical stuff, but just so you actually have a space um, that's separate from the mundane, ordinary world, especially if you are a practitioner of the craft. Another thing I want to mention is when you're just beginning on your path, you know, look into meditation. Learn what it means to ground to the earth, or earthing, if you want to call it that. Learn what it means to cleanse yourself, to purify a space. Um, what it means to protect yourself with energetic shielding and visualization. All of these things are basic and very important in um, any craft, um, no matter what type of witch you are. Um, so that's just some simple advice I want to give to you newbie witches. Um, I, I just, I know there's not a lot of information out there for you guys when you're first beginning, but learning what your tools are, the importance of the lunar phases and the certain magical days of the year, the eight sabbats that are great for harnessing certain times of power, um, learning what different herbs are good for what. It's also good to just um, go on a walk in your local neighborhood and just see what herbs that you see growing, like wild onion, lavender, daffodils, um, daisies. Um, you know, be familiar with what's around you. That's what witchcraft was all about, just us using what's naturally around us and using it for our craft to heal people, to do spells, bring luck, money, you know, learning talismans. Um, Maybe you want to make your own symbols, runes, and stuff. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I try to keep it as short as I could. I'm sorry if this video is too long. But if you have any more questions, if, if you're a complete beginner, feel free. I can make more elaborate videos on certain topics for you. Thank you guys. Blessed be in love and light.